Hey guys, this is Jason Asbury from Storm Ruler. Play guitar, vocals, bass on record. This is Jesse Schobel. I play drums in Storm Ruler and uh, vocals on a song or two. We're gonna do a little talk through for you on this album. So the next interlude we have here, setting up the next song, the Shade of Vlassian Forest. This is uh, the Waters of Ayalamita, which is the river that runs through the Vlassian Forest that helped uh, rehydrate and refurbish the Ottoman army as they marched on the Romanian lands. Yes, and also was a good subject of the Brad Pitt movie, A River Runs Through It. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, that's not true. But uh, yeah, and um, like, I guess musically on this interlude, I tried to kind of get like a, a war march kind of idea. Maybe not necessarily like, you know, like um, something kind of like adventurous and marchy with like, there. it, it kind of sounds like uh, rim clicks, like stick, but it's actually a floor tom, which opens up as the song moves on and it's kind of cool. Like the war drums get louder. It's a good build up, yeah, yeah. So we have In the Shaded Vlassian Forest, um, which starts off with uh, a favorite riff of mine, uh, kind of an immortal style, like, pulsy black metal riff. A little, little stabs. Yeah, it's fun a nice stabby riff. Yeah, to <clears throat> get the stabs on the guitars, I love that. Yeah, now this song, uh, lyrically, is paying a little homage to classic 90s black metal, because obviously... Mm. Vlad the Impaler and the Romanian and the Transylvanian Ottoman conflicts were always a hot topic. Oh yeah, nothing's bands. more black metal than that. So, you know. of course had to at least do one and that would be this one, The Shaded Vlassian Forest. Yeah, uh, I love the, um, the I guess, kind of pre-chorus riff is similar to the opening riff, but it, the stabs are mm. a little different and uh, there's like a thrash beat here and there. A little rhythmic switch up. And it sounds like the same riff, but it isn't. And uh, it's a cool kind of development. And then I love <clears> how it jams into that um, Mid-tempo riff. Straight out of blasting Man. right into the... Yeah. Is that a six, no, it's not a 6-8 riff, is it? Uh, yeah. The, no, 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 no. yeah, it's got the, like, yeah, that yeah. kind of feel. And, uh, yeah, <clears throat> Which that's actually, always so fun to play. A uh, little fun fact is the lead that is on that one, not the... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but the lead that comes up over the big uh, corded part. We did, we, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, we didn't come up with that until we were done with the record, and we were sitting in there just doing like yeah. maybe some edits. How or something. can we enhance? I think I think yeah. we were just sitting there, and I started playing it, and we're like, "Yeah, that's yeah, it. Let's, let's just happen. put it in there yeah, <laughs> because that yeah. sounds cool." A lot of things get come up with in that way, like, right you know, at the you very Kind of yeah. like experiment, and uh, yeah, sometimes it's always the funner old. part. Funner. The Butter. more the more fun part yes. of being in the studio. Being in the studio is just like coming up with little absolutely little things to absolutely. Throw in. Yeah, the song kills. So definitely make sure you listen to this one if you go through the. Record. It's gonna be an excellent B side, I think. For sure. This next interlude track is titled "Amid a Smear of Crimson Cloud." Yeah, it's just like um, the melody of the song that's about to happen, kind of being introduced in a uh, somewhat uh, apocalyptic and, way. Yeah, melancholic. Yeah, just kind of trying to, you know, just this is straight up mood setter. Another one of those things where we were pretty much done with the interludes and everything, and then we were sitting down here listening, and I was like, I think some horns going. Doo, 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 yeah, doo, the doo, horn would be kind of cool. fanfare. Yeah, yeah, the, the fanfare I, came in later. late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That was, yeah, yes, turned out well. This song is called Apparitions Across the Raven Crest. Uh, big inspiration, kind of from Catatonia on this one with that mm. mid tempo, just slow pounding. Yes, groove. yes. Yep. Uh, it can be a powerful groove if, you know, yeah. I, uh, Lyrically, I came up with this one while I was out hunting, because uh, I do a lot of hunting. But uh, it's the only introspective song in our catalog, really. 
Yeah, yeah. I guess I remember. More deep yeah. in thought. Yeah, it's that. one of the few song or the only song that's not actually about like some other some lore or, or something. Lore. Yeah. yeah. No uh, apparitions being the thoughts that go through my my head and the Ravencrest being that. Yes. I wish my head was a raven crest. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, I think musically, you know, good mid-tempo, uh, um, nice leads by you, uh, the Opethian kind of approach on the chorus, drum-wise, mm -hmm. you know, kind of leave it wide <laughs> open, uh, blast section in the middle, of course, for the Ferrat, because can't, big, can't uh, help it. Once again, another big... Falkenbaki dissection influence on yeah, that on that bridge. Totally. And for anyone who knows knows is uh, the homage that was paid to Valfar Ein Vindir on the Yeehaw. Rest. And, oh yeah. And the Yelp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Always loved the uh, Valfar's like Yelp he did on uh, Iron Tour, mm -hmm. and uh, we were like, you know what? It's time. Daddy. Yeah. Truly. Oh, and yeah. uh, I'm a advocate for more Yeehaws in black metal, so. I couldn't agree more. All right, here we have Sanguinaire Vampiris with uh, its very Terminator 2 sounding uh, very beginning, which I kind of dig. That's like hints at a melody to be played in the song, as I like to do. And then <coughs> this kind of like very sparse piano idea just to kind of create uh, tension um, and to kind of just like put you in kind of a vampiric kind of mood you know which I'm always in anyway but which is fitting for uh, the lyrical content of this next the next song. piece so yeah and then uh, this kind of creepy like Gassy. bat yeah, evil bat <laughs> yell kind of fades in I love that you know it kind of like makes it even more you know, it's cold. blood soaked, if you will. Yeah. yeah, dig it. All right, this next track is Upon Frozen Shores, which is uh, a track inspired by Elder Scrolls with a very Almost a Monomarthian uh, yeah. vibe to kick it For off. For sure, yeah. Throughout the whole thing. Yes, I love the, it's it's like this, like BPM is like not too fast or too slow, you know, it's just like a good kind of grooving tempo. It's a, it's a fun one to lock into. It is, it <laughs> is. Uh, drum wise, there's a lot of like kind of an Opethian approach here and there, uh, particularly right in the middle of the song uh, during your solo, mm -hmm. very much with the Opeth beat, the bun, and, they do that a lot, yeah, you know, yeah. and um, also the interlude is very kind of immortally, a little dissection-y with some sweet mouth harp in there. Uh, lyrically, this is a song about the birth of the first vampire mm. uh, in the Elder Scrolls universe and the yes. taking of a, mm. of a woman and her mm. becoming the first uh, vampire. A woman's taint is at the base of everyone's problem, I swear <laughs> to God. Okay, here we have the Shadow of the Golden Eagle, um, an interludian track that, uh, like others, uh, has melodic foreshadows of the song that's about to come. Uh, I think like three or four of them in this one. Like all of my favorite riffs in the next song are kind of wrapped in this piece. All right, this next track is Along the Appian Way with uh, another classic Storm Roller intro with the big hits. The Gotta love it. Acoustic twinklies and fun lead. Yeah, just like easy to predict that something cool epic's gonna happen. You know, if you hear the song for the first time or see it live, you can be like, oh, uh huh. And drop uh -huh. down into the little mid tempo groove right here before it kicks into. Falcon Box the sounding Falcon, groove. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think the, uh, the lead that of the black the black metal riff in the middle like the fast riff and then the riff before it that is the same riff but is not played last mm -hmm. 
I think that's like one of the best risks oh, that you've come up with. Yeah, yeah it's so, <clears throat> so money. Plus this song was early in the writing process. Very early, which uh, the lead that kicks off the bridge of this song, the, the blasty section of this song, uh, we wrote during Under the Burning Clips, maybe at the very end of it. It could have easily been on yeah, that it, record. It was one of the demos. And yeah. uh, <clears throat> another fun fact is the in that demo, the lead from, that, uh, from this song and the chorus of To Bear the Twin Faces of the Dragon were actually in the same song. And yeah, yep. Yeah, it'd be kind of fun to see which of our songs could be like pieced together and make a new song, a Franken <laughs> song. Out of, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think this this song I, I find to be a really strong track. Uh, I, Another I, fun one to play. Super fun to play. Uh, uh, the riff at the end, you know, it fades out and goes into just like a pounding <laughs> groove. It's just like a crowd pleaser all day. Super fun drummer friendly. Riff. Another song with a good mid tempo rocked out uh, verse. Yep, yep, and yep. It's got a black and rolling kind of verse ish and enough fast parts to keep it black metal but enough yeah. like groove to, that just to be a pounder and i, I love it what's Which, the subject matter the mid-tempo the... black rock and roll influences should not be overlooked no in, in any no black metal, it's really. so fun to play it's so fun to write mm -hmm. it's not it, it just flows well uh and yeah, to call out the uh, the subject matter of the song being the Roman, the Roman times, Romans. which is the uh, Spartacus revolt. Mm -hmm. And which, what were they doing with the Appian <clears throat> Way? Exactly? Which, for those that don't know, when Spartacus was overrun and his army was captured, they crucified I think it was three six thousand something. Yeah, a ridiculous amount. A, a ridiculous amount of people along the Appian Way. So. For miles and miles, there were people just crucified. Every, On this whole every stretch of road, as a yeah. reminder. Yeah. Or, and I think that's where Game of Thrones got the influence from the Free Cities yeah. when Daenerys uh, sees the slaves. Crucified the masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <clears throat> yeah, yep. Love that. I hate that, but I love that. So yes, uh, by Winter's Long Pass, and of course there was, we had to re figure out how to The big pass. debacle, I don't, for those <laughs> that don't know, we're a little illiterate. <laughs> yeah. We aren't, we aren't actually, but we were definitely like, is it P-A-S-T or P-A-S-S-T? It's one of those, yeah, it's one of those. Either one looked right, but could have been wrong, and so it took a while to figure that one word out. But either way, um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> another interlude, foreshadowing interlude where I took themes from the song that's about to happen and like kind of expressed them with fun, like keyboard, uh, little instruments including I love the Venice Canal mm. and uh, yeah just kind of wanted to foreshadow riffs in a appropriate way so I think it leads in well absolutely I like the way it leads in from oh, yeah, from, yeah. The, from the synthy into that more AM the sound Dark the Souls car. bell the doo -doo -doo. matched up doo -doo -doo -doo. with the riff oh, yeah. yeah yeah that that, that was turned executed out perfectly. Real I love nice. that turned out real nice yeah Final track on the record, and I would go as far to say as the album Epic is, uh, there's a few of them, but this one. Hard to say which one. <laughs> this is A Malice, Dead, and Cold, which is yes. one of the only songs on the record that uh, story was purely just thought up on my own and uh, tells the tale of a, of a king that was overthrown, uh, a child warrior that left home, gathered an army, came back and besieged the castle and took back his home. Yeah, uh, very warlike uh, pounding grooves in this song. Mm -hmm. um, the intro is long and builds for a while, which I love. <laughs> and uh, kind of drew a, like a little inspiration there from uh, Druk, actually. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Druk has a good uh, big droney intro. Yeah, droney intros are um, a good thing to do. I mean, especially toward the end of the album. You know, after you've been hitting the face a number of times, it's kind of just like hit you in the face real slow over a period of time. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then just pounds, builds and pounds uh, into a verse. Very big mid-tempo first half of the song. The first totally. half of the song just pounds. Yeah, yeah, pounds for a while to the point where you wonder if it's going to speed up, which of course it, it does. does. <laughs> we and never fail to bring up nah, the blast. Yeah, you got to. Got to bring the blast. Uh, which this last section goes on for a hot minute, plays through a bunch of series. 
and then uh, the drum fill coming out of it, going back into like the verse right into your solo. Into the solo. Yeah, I mean, every time I love playing that. Just, with like, the uh, oh, with one of my favorite outros on this whole record, which is yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dan, 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 yeah, just dan, pounds dan. for a while. That lead on that was probably my favorite lead. It sounds kind of nautical, you know, like you're Almost. like you're on the sea, like sailing. Just to finished conquer, battle, getting blasted mm. in the face by the spray. Yeah, I just I love it. Yeah. Which I love the way it ends, where uh, it comes out of the the pounding six eight groove with the acoustic, and the acoustic fades in. Oh yeah, the electric mm -hmm. fades out, mm -hmm. and it ends with kind of a. a yeah, I think it's a perfect way to end the album. Yeah, outro. It just and I like outro. I like the fact that we end the record with an acoustic uh, passage mm. and open just it like it started, passage. full circle. It's almost like it was planned, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't planned. So that was uh, Sacred Rights and Black Magic, our new record out on Napalm Records, uh, available everywhere on October 14th. Uh, honestly, it's probably already out. We're probably already get it. Hopefully, everyone has picked it up. And, uh, are available thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, some fun tidbits were uh, dropped and, like, maybe to enhance the listening of the record. And yeah. uh, hopefully, everyone digs it, listens to it all the way through. And uh, <clears throat> if you're one of those people who doesn't have time for a whole all the way through, which I get, every once in a while, throw in the album and start from the middle and go toward the end. You know, the stuff maybe you don't hear as much. So uh, I'd throw that directly. It's a lot to take in on your first uh, first listen through. Yeah, but thanks everyone for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys on tour. Two is like a whole new area entirely. Yeah, I should not put my hand but in this cup listen. holder. Let's start the song over. The entire song, I, I, the entire talk, I have my hand in this cup holder. I should not do that. Yeah. Fucking cup holder. Put your hand in the cup holder. I always just... put it in there. We gotta start over. I'm sorry. I don't want to be like doing this entire thing like this. It was Brad Pitt in a river runs through it? And amid a smear of crimson. I think this is like a more atmospheric one. Not mu not a ton to say about this one, but. <laughs> I told you, I'll play with the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Before I put October 15th, because I answered the couple of <laughs> 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 that thing.